Hi, this lesson is on Geology Standard 3.3, Fast Changes on Earth. In this lesson, we will discuss earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain building. Before we start our lesson on earthquakes, let's first take a minute and discuss different types of plate boundaries. There are three main types of plate boundaries, all of which are shown in the white section of the picture below. On the left-hand side, we see two plates moving past each other. This is called a transform plate boundary. In the middle image, we have plates moving away from each other. This is a divergent plate boundary. We've seen this before when talking about seafloor spreading. And in the third picture, we have two plates crashing into each other. We've also seen this before when talking about subduction. So what exactly is an earthquake? An earthquake is really any movement of the Earth's crust due to the release of energy between two stuck plates. So if we look in the image on the right, we see how the plate is broken into two different pieces, one moving on the, in a downward direction, the other moving in an upward direction. When these plates stick together due to the friction, it builds up potential energy. When finally the potential energy is more than the friction, it snaps into kinetic energy. So imagine the two plates rubbing together as they move past each other. The friction between the two plates is what causes the earthquakes. Another way to remember this is stick-slip motion. So the plates slide past each other and may stick due to the friction that we talked about. However, the mantle below is still moving. Remember those convection currents? When the plate finally breaks and slips, it's called stick-slip motion. So let's look at the picture on the right. Have you ever tried to open a stuck door? You pull and you pull and you pull and it won't do anything and finally, crack! It just snaps open. That's an example of an earthquake. So where do we find these earthquakes? Do you remember the three different types of plate boundaries we talked about before? Plate movement causes earthquakes at all three of these type pl of plate boundaries, and sometimes even within the plates. So as a review, we have type divergent boundaries, where the plates move away from each other, convergent boundaries, where the plates move towards each other, and transform boundaries, where the plates slide past each other. Again, earthquakes can occur at all three types of these plate boundaries. However, we should also remember that earthquakes may not affect a whole plate boundary at a time. So think about like a whole line of shopping carts. If we try to move a whole row of shopping carts, not all the shopping carts may move at the same time. This is the way it is with earthquakes. It may not affect a whole plate boundary at a time. Let's take a look at some real life examples of earthquakes on plate boundaries. So take a look at the image on the left. All those little dots are um, where earthquakes have occurred. Do you notice a trend? Like where are most of the dots? Okay, in the right hand picture, try to match up the dots to where they lie on the plates. See how they all occur right along the plate boundaries? Is there one plate that has more earthquakes than another? Yep, the, plate bound, the Pacific plate boundary seem to have more earthquakes than most. This is called the Ring of Fire. We'll talk more about this later. Earth's plates are constantly changing. They're being torn apart, added to, joined with other plates. And sometimes old plates can actually be within newer plates. And the faults of these old plates can still cause earthquakes. So let's take a look at the map of the United States on the left. Do you see near Missouri and Arkansas and Kentucky and Tennessee, there's a pink hotspot? That's actually the location of the new Madrid plate. And this is an ancient plate, and it still actually gives us earthquakes today. Now we're moving into volcanoes. This image on the left is actually a really good representation of what a volcano looks like in the inside. Do you see down below we have the magma chamber? This is where the magma builds up pressure and finally goes up through the central vent, that central channel that goes from the magma channel to the crater, to the mouth of the volcano. You'll also notice that there are smaller channels that veer off to the left and to the right. These may never surface, 
but they still form within the, the rock layers. Here's another really great picture or diagram of the inside of a volcano. So take a minute and look at this if you haven't had a chance to already. What is a volcano? A volcano is really any site where melted rock, gases, ash, and other materials from Earth's mantle are released or erupted. So again, we have our magma reservoir and then the channel through which it flows and goes up through the mouth of the volcano. Let's talk for a minute about volcanoes at divergent boundaries. And again, divergent boundaries are when the plates are moving away from each other. So we talked about this earlier when we were talking about seafloor spreading. But in this case, the magma from the mantle goes up towards the surface. This magma is melted basalt, so it's a really dense magma. The basalt cools so quickly, however, because of the ocean water that it forms what looks like pillows, which is what we see on the right there. What about volcanoes at convergent boundaries? So convergent boundaries, remember, are any time when two plates collide. These can be two oceanic crust plates, um, two continental crust plates, or an oceanic crust and a continental crust crashing into each other. That's why I've included images of all three types on the right. So subduction of one plate under another causes melted, melting of the mantle rock, which forms the magma. The magma rises through the continental crust and forms a volcano. This magma is different from what we talked about with the divergent boundaries in that it's lighter in color, it's really thick and sticky, but it's less dense than the basalt. Here's the picture of the ring of fire that we were talking about earlier. Again, there are a lot of volcanoes that occur within this region as well. So earthquakes and volcanoes can both occur quite frequently actually along this ring of fire. Now we're going to talk briefly about volcanic island chains. So a plume or a channel actually st stretches up from the lower mantle all the way up through the asthenosphere and releases in what is known as a hot spot in the middle of the oceanic crust. This plume, however, I hope you can see it on the right hand side there, it's the, the red um, strip that goes up from the lower mantle to the asthenosphere, it stays in the same place. It does not move. However, the asthenosphere, I'm sorry, the lithosphere is constantly moving. So, whenever that plume releases some magma, it actually creates volc a volcanic island. However, that lithosphere is still moving, so oftentimes you have a bunch of little islands forming because of that hot spot. So again, the plume stays in the same place, but the plate moves, which creates a series of volcanic islands from the lava that hardens and builds up. Can you think of an example of this in the United States? Actually, Hawaii is a perfect example of a fixed hot spot creating islands. So let's look at the picture. We've got our fixed hot spot. The lithosphere is actually moving, and every time it moves, it creates a little island. So again, let's look at the picture on the right. Do you see all the different islands that make up Hawaii? Okay, this is a perfect example of how that fixed hot spot surfaces and creates the islands. And we can really see here how that lithosphere is moving. Okay, now let's move on to mountain building. We really talked about this a lot in our standard 3.2, but this will be a good review. So mountains form whenever two plates collide or crash into each other. So this can be an oceanic crust and a continental crust, or it can be two, two continental crusts crashing into each other. Again, this is why I've provided pictures of both on the right-hand side. A really great example of this is actually India. When India was a subcontinent and wasn't part of Asia yet, it really was shot away from Africa and it was booking it. It was moving at a really fast pace. And when it crashed into Asia, it was really like a high-velocity car crash. So the subcontinent of India crashed into Asia, 
forming a high impact crash zone. So think of two cars that run into each other and their bumpers, their front bumpers are completely mangled. In this case, it formed the Himalayan mountains. Well guys, that really finishes up our lesson on standard 3.3, Fast Changes on Earth. Please let me know if you have any questions and Mrs. Ladner and I would love to help you the best we can. Good luck on all your pieces of evidence!